Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about metformin. So I'll begin by talking about metformin in general, what it is and why you have possibly already heard of it because it's currently being used to treat type 2 diabetes. And then we'll look at the application of metformin in this recent cell metabolism paper and how this study reinforces other studies that have shown that metformin may have anti-inflammatory effects. And then briefly, basically I got a little bit carried away whilst making this video and was reading all the different literature about the potential use of metformin for alleviating symptoms of COVID-19. As I came across a really good summary review article that well, effectively summarises a lot of the observational data that's been collected over the last few months. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But let's get going. Let's start with what is metformin. So I thought I hadn't mentioned metformin before in this channel, but I have a couple of times actually. But I didn't really go into any detail about it. So what you're looking at now is metformin, or to give the correct name, NN dimethyl imidocarbonamidic diamide. I don't even know if I said that right, but we're just going to stick with metformin for now. So, metformin is the first line medication for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So, it's used to treat high blood sugar levels. And so, type 2 diabetes is an age associated disease. And according to this article, there's a projection that by 2050, one in three US adults could have type 2 diabetes. However, the molecular mechanism of metformin isn't completely understood and a variety of potential mechanisms have been given. Some of these include inhibition of oxidative phosphorylation within the mitochondria, activation of AMPK, which as you can see in this diagram here, is thought to also help to activate sirtuins and to suppress the growth signaling pathways within a cell and also impinges on insulin signaling, which explains its efficacy as a type 2 diabetes treatment. And even more recent studies now seem to show that metformin can have significant effects on the gut microbiome as well, altering the composition. And those alterations are also mediating the beneficial outcome of the use of metformin in type 2 diabetes management. However, metformin's become even more of interest recently because Studies have shown that metformin can extend lifespan in mice. And also, as explained in this research article, older men who had been taking metformin because they had type 2 diabetes also had a reduced likelihood of getting dementia, cancer, depression and cardiovascular disease just by taking metformin. And so these diseases are also age-associated diseases and so what has been initiated is the Targeting Aging with Metformin trial, which is a nationwide six-year clinical trials at 14 different research institutions that are trying to assess the efficacy of metformin in preventing these different age-associated diseases. And so one of the hallmarks of aging that is associated with these different diseases is inflammation or sometimes referred to as inflammaging. And this generally refers to the cytokines that are secreted within the body, such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-6 that also seem to increase in abundance during aging. However, what is currently less understood is what is the cause of this inflammation in the first place? Where are these cytokines coming from? And so one source of this inflammation can come from senescent cells, but another major source comes from T cells, which are a subset of immune cells within the body. And so given that there is accumulating evidence that metformin may have anti-inflammatory effects as well, the cell metabolism paper sought to explore the impact of metformin on age-associated T cell inflammation. And so the work in this paper helps to uncover further the potential mechanisms underpinning the behaviour and effects of metformin within the body. So the authors began by examining the cytokines secreted by activated T cells taken from healthy 30 year old and 60 year old people to see how age influences the cytokine profile. And so if we look at this figure here we can see that in the older T cells 
there were higher secretion levels of interleukin 17A, 17F, 21 and 6. And these are associated with the subset of T cells, the T helper cells 17 subset, whose presence is used as a predictor for type 2 diabetes and also promotes gum disease. However, when the older T cells were given metformin the same time that they were activated, the levels of these different cytokines reduced to the same level as seen in the young T cells. So what has happened in the older T cells to enable them to secrete more of these TH17 cytokines? So there were two key lines of evidence that helped to elucidate this question. The first was that when they knocked down autophagy in the young T cells, they actually activated this TH17 profile into the young cells. And so autophagy is a natural process within cells that removes unnecessary and dysfunctional components that includes damaged proteins and organelles within the cell. And the second line of evidence came from the observation that the older T cells had increased levels of reactive oxygen species and these levels were reduced when metformin was given to the cells. However, to really understand what metformin is doing, a molecular underpinning to these changes is required. And so whilst this paper still doesn't really find uh, exactly what metformin is doing upstream, it identified STAT3, which is a transcription factor that actually upregulates this TH17 secretion of cytokines as a downstream signaling component of this inflammatory activation. And the authors show that aging seems to promote STAT3 activation, whilst metformin has the impact of preventing this activation and thus also reducing the expression of these different cytokines. So what can we take from this paper? Well, I found a really good summary at the end of this science mag commentary, which is basically, is there enough evidence to take metformin to rejuvenate our immune system and promote healthy aging? Well, not quite yet, mainly because this paper didn't do any assessments on chronic low-grade inflammation in FIVO, And it also didn't examine the contribution of other immune cells, such as monocytes and macrophages, in driving inflammation. However, what the authors claim in this paper is at least their work should justify the start of full-scale clinical trials using this T helper cell 17 inflammation as a primary outcome. But the other reason why research like this is interesting is because inflammation is associated with one of the outcomes of COVID-19 infected patients, which is the respiratory failure referred to as acute respiratory distress syndrome. And the other link to COVID-19 is the fact that patients with type 2 diabetes are associated with both poorer clinical outcomes during the pandemic and an increased risk of death in hospitalised patients. So as I mentioned earlier, as I was preparing for this video, I came across this really concise review article and effectively what they do in this review article is they took data from different observational retrospective studies and looked at the reduction in mortality in metformin users compared with non-users and um, we'll just explore some of the data that they collected. So firstly, this article suggested mechanisms to explain the possible positive effects of metformin on COVID-19 outcomes. And so these include things that we spoke about earlier, such as improving glucose control and also activating AMPK. But this time they're a bit more obviously specific and relating to COVID-19. So in particular, they in one study, they showed that AMPK activation leads to phosphorylation of ACE2, which can actually inhibit the virus penetration into the cells. And so I spoke about ACE2 in, well, in a video I suppose I made months ago now, initially talking about um, SARS-CoV-2. But it also suggests that by reducing body weight and also inhibiting the mTOR pathway as other possible positive effects of taking metformin. But what about the actual data that they've seen? So as I mentioned, they took data from different studies that have been conducted during the pandemic so far. And effectively, what you can see is that there seems to be a reduction in mortality in metformin users compared with non-users among patients with type 2 diabetes hospitalized for COVID-19. However, 
um, as this article also cautions, a firm conclusion about the impact of metformin therapy can only be drawn from double-blind randomized controlled trials. And currently, it's very challenging to do such trials. And also the fact that metformin is out of patent and very inexpensive. And so getting funding to do such studies is also a challenge. Although I said, I didn't entirely know too much about how these trials are conducted. So since I was talking about metformin in this video, I thought it was worth mentioning this as well. So as always, I hope you have learned something from the variety of different studies that I've spoken about in this video. And as always, thanks for listening.